is the senior rabbi of Reform Judaism, the UK's second largest Jewish group. Her father and her grandfather were lab Labour MPs and Labour Lords, and you are a member of the Jewish Party, of uh, the Labour Party as well, so you have very good credentials uh, when it comes to talking about Labour. Um, I want to come back to the statement from the Chief Rabbi. He says that within the Jewish community there is anxiety. What does he mean by anxiety? How, 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 do, how do you see that anxiety? So I see anxiety is a mixture of the past and the present. What's happened in the past and how does it reflect on the present? Anxiety stops you doing something bad, stops you tripping up and says take care. So you look at the facts on the table, you look at a person interviewed half an hour ago who wouldn't apologise. You look at, at the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, who was in a television debate last week, who lied and said that the cases have been dealt with and you have Lord Faulkner saying the opposite. This makes you anxious because you're fearful. What is this like for Jews? What is this like for Muslims? What is this like for anyone who is othered? This is not just about Jews at all. This is an assessment of the integrity and, and dignity of the leader of the Labour Party, and he doesn't have those. Mm. But then as, to say, as the Chief Rabbi and the Muslim and Council of Britain have, have done, vote with your conscience. I mean, clearly, the Chief Rabbi is saying vote with your conscience, vote for the Conservatives, or vote, maybe in your case, for, I think, for the Liberal Democrats. You know, the, the Muslim Council of Britain is saying vote Labour. Uh, they are, in a way, directing the vote. Are you comfortable with that? So I think you have to be very careful with power, which is what underlies all of this. And I wouldn't want to tell someone who to vote for and who not to vote for. I think we have an imperative to vote, and I know that there's been a massive spike in people now registering, which is wonderful. Um, but religion and politics have always gone together because politics is about the fabric of society and how do we want to impact on society. Religion is about the fabric of society and how we impact. So being involved in a narrative around the country and who's leading and what we're saying, that's always been the religious zone. Who specifically? I don't think, and Rabbi Mervis said, I will not tell you who to vote for, and I think that's great. Okay. But I mean, aren't we seeing here, in some way, this idea of voting with your, or your conscience, you're seeing the moral imperative crashing up against electoral choices. I mean, even though he said he's not saying what to vote for, that is the reality. I think one of the moral imperatives here is for the leaders of the parties to long-term look at what is happening about racism across the board and also homophobia and other issues that we've seen xenophobia and to understand that they will be always held into account for it. Uh, do you think, the? I mean, I guess uh, my question is, there are going to be those who say, right, well, I'll vote for Lib Dems to try and avoid uh, what is clearly concerns about racism or religious intolerance. Uh, is there a danger that it splits the vote uh, and hands victory to, to sort of a, a party that perhaps was not the intention. One of the wonderful things about the British system is the constituency system. And I would say, look at your MP. There are lots of fabulous Labour MPs that sh I would love to be re-elected. So from the point of view of strategic voting, Conservative, Lib Dem, Labour, that's in each constituency. But I want many of those outstanding and brave Labour MPs to be re-elected. I've seen some of the reaction on social media today, as I'm sure you have. Um, yes. There was a letter in the Jewish Chronicle the other week from Rabbi Howard Cooper, who worries that this perpetuates further the fantasy that, that Jews, the Jewish community is some sort of homogenous group yes. uh, who only really care about themselves. Yes. Are you worried that the, the chief rabbi's intervention might increase those sort of, of comments? So I think if people bundle Jews together and think we're all the same or will blame us for Labour getting in or not getting in, then that's concerning in and of itself about their attitudes to racism. That's not my fault or my problem. Jews are super diverse. Look at me. I'm the senior rabbi. I'm a woman, completely different in attitudes and outlook than Rabbi Mervis. And we're all part of the wider community, but so different. And from the point of view of caring for others, this is not about Judaism. This is not about Jewish racism. This is about racism, whether towards Muslims or Hindus or Sikhs or whoever. And we are always, Jews, very, very involved in, in, in aligning ourselves together against racism 
with other people. So I think this is absolutely not. And one of the things about trending on social media is I don't want it to trend. I want Judas to be boring. I want Jews to be boring and people really not to care. Please ignore us. And in a situation where we're talking about Jews so much, I'm spending so much of my life talking about anti-Semitism, that's not the job of a rabbi. Mm. It's to enrich people's lives and help them through their lives and not talk about this. So let's talk about Muslims and Jews and what kind of Britain we want and what is democracy. Mm. Just, just one final point, and I think this is really important because a colleague mentioned it to me today. Yes. She said, you know, we treat the Holocaust as history. Yes. And for many of us, it is just yesterday. And, mm -hmm. and is that, when, coming back to my first question, this anxiety, is that what is at the root of it? So there is an enormous difference between the anxiety levels that Jews feel that have skyrocketed and the change in anti-Jewish incidents, which have increased, but not according to the level of our anxiety. We are half a second from the Holocaust. I was in Auschwitz last month. There are still survivors alive. So we feel it very raw. Doesn't mean we're wrong. I mean, I think it was Groucho Marx who said, just because they're you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. Rabbi Laura, it's lovely to see you. Thank and you. Thank you.